you're a member of LDP. Yes, would laban you, ng Democratic ng Pilipinas. Would you entertain thoughts of joining <clears throat> Liberal Party since you're very supporting the President anyway? I was actually asked to join the Liberal Party uh, early this year, but I politely declined. Why? Well, because I think, um, you know, I, I, I'm pushing for the Political Party Reform Act and mm -hmm. that kind of uh, discourages uh, party hopping. So... LDP That's, had its heyday in the yes. eight, late 80s, early, early 90s, 90s yeah. when your father was running for vice president. <clears throat> mm, yes, really? also, yeah. It was, it was in power when Arab became president. So. But right now, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, the members of LDP now are your family. Oh, well, there's, a, there's a substantially more than that, <laughs> I think. And a little, a few more, I think. We have about uh, 200 members in position, but... But no longer in nationwide. No longer in prominent positions like senator or congressman. But we do have mayors. We have uh, we have board members. We have councillors. We have vice mayors. Vice Outside governors. Aurora. Yes. yes. From so, what? Uh, Zamboanga City, Mindoro, uh, Bulacan. So it's it's fairly spread out. But you're right. The most the center of its power right now is Aurora, because that's the that's where we have the most number of officials. Relevant is LDP now as a political party with 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 those numbers. Well, um, less than before, I would suppose, <laughs> because politics it's numbers. But in terms of uh, force of ideas, I think I think it would still be relevant. Force yeah. of ideas, because yeah. because you have very few political parties who are really pushing for the interest of political parties as as vehicles for ideas and uh, platforms rather than as just vehicles for individuals or personalities. How will you improve the political party system? Well, I think we have to improve the quality of our democracy. By uh, There are a few things we can do. Number one is uh, making leaders accountable. It seems that after every election, all the promises are forgotten, all the campaign speeches are forgotten. And media can help in that respect no? by reminding people, you know, so-and-so candidate, so-and-so party, promise that they would do this, uh, let's hold them accountable to it. Uh, number two is, uh, is uh, making sure there's a meritocracy in, in a sense. Mm -hmm. you know? We're not just, it's not enough to be a democracy because uh, what kind of democracy is that if uh, only a few individuals or uh, families control not only the politics but also the economy. So the Political Party System Act is one way for me that I think it's not, uh, it's not definitely not a uh, your all solution. It's not a panacea, no? It's, it's, uh, but uh, definitely, I think it's one way to encourage smaller parties. It's one way to encourage party loyalty. And not for, not for the sake of parties themselves, but for the sake of uh, building vehicles that last beyond individuals because individuals come and go in politics. The average political career is probably about 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. What happens then, right? So... You're talking, sir, about few individuals um, in positions in government. Let's talk about Aurora, sure. where your family has been governing there since World War II? Uh, I ha my grandfather was a mayor after the war, and there was a substantial time amount of time where no member of the, f the next member of our direct line who held office was my uncle in 1980. So there was a significant gap where there was no Angara in Baler or in Aurora. Mm -hmm. And then the, my father ran in 87. But really, I think the, the dynasty really uh, evolved maybe in, since 04. Because that's when we held mm -hmm. uh, four positions in Aurora. Mayor, governor, congressman, senator. And you yeah. have been vocal in, say, in defending political dynasties. No, no, no. I, I think I've been misconstrued or misunderstood. I'm not defending political dynasties. I'm defending what we've done, what, are, what we've achieved in Aurora. I'm not defending the phenomenon of political dynasties. In fact, I believe in the goal that uh, you must give greater opportunities to others in dispersing power, but uh, without unduly limiting the rights of people to choose their leaders. And in Aurora? Everyone is, anyone is free to run against us. There's, there's, no, there's no barriers to entry, unlike a monopoly which prevents maybe there's a legal... Uh, prevention or obstacle to entering the market. But here, 
it's a free market. Anybody can join. Would it be such a tragedy, for example, if no Angara run for elected no, officials in not, Angara next it's year? Not, it's not a tragedy. It's, it, it's going to happen sooner or later. Because there's a negative perception against political sure, families sure, because, uh, who are only there to stay in power. Yeah, but uh, I think the discussion on political dynasties has been um, quite just focusing on the names, but not on the achievements. Mm -hmm. So, it's, in that sense, it's, it's... And you're saying it's the Angaras are different in that sense? I think so, because if you compare what we've done in the province in the last nine years, it's more than what's happened in the province in the, in the previous 50 years. So, I think... Um, uh, I think, in a sense, it was a golden age, you know. But, I mean, that sounds a little pompous, no? But uh, I think historically, it, it will appear that way. That when that's when the aurora really came to national, the consciousness of national policymakers. It really got its share, its rightful share of the national budget. Uh, got a new hospital, mm -hmm. a new state college, uh, new classrooms, new roads. In fact, you have OFWs who come back from abroad and they come and they don't recognize the province anymore because they say, you know, this used to be a river, now it's a road, it's a bridge, you know. So, so sir, now that you're seeking a national position, how will your campaign be different from when you were running in Aurora? Well, it's be more expensive, that's for sure. <laughs> um, it's... You know, when you run at the local, you go house to house. You shake everybody's hand. And that's what you, that you have been doing? Yeah, you, you do that. But uh, here, it's impossible. There's no way of shaking 50 million hands. You, you, it's just impossible. Uh, so what's this? You have In to find sense. ways to get your message across. And media plays a big role. So I think the senatorial campaign is media-dominated. It's, uh, in a sense, it's, uh, it's a lot of perceptions. You know, sometimes the perceptions jive with reality, sometimes they don't. How would you describe the level of campaign now, the level of debates? I would like to see, I'm hoping to see more substantial debates, especially now that uh, a lot of the young voters are on the internet. I think it's good to, uh, I'm hoping that uh, they will tune in and really check out uh, qualifications of the candidates um, and see them and see debates, real life debates. And but to, so far when you go around, how is it? They so have to far sing, when I go they around, have to dance? No, I've never had to sing and dance, but I, I'm anticipating it's going to happen at some point. You know. And you're... But uh, I've never had to do it. In, I think I sang once and maybe I danced a few times in my uh, campaigns in the province. You know, I remember when I first ran the just you know, ocho, ocho. I remember I had to do that. You had to do <laughs> Yeah. But that's a local campaign. Yeah, it's a local campaign. That's why. That's, that's why, because you have rallies and in every barangay. So you, if, they, if they start dancing, then you kind of have to show solidarity with them. You know? And you, when you become senator, is there something that... It, it won't be any different, or will it be different from your I think um, there's a different position. dynamic from the House, Good. because you're, there's less of you. I think there are more substantial debates, really. In the Senate. In the Senate. Uh, but at the same time, uh, maybe the committee hearings will be faster. You don't have as many because you have less people asking questions. So I think at the committee level, it's faster. But at the plenary level, there are a lot more senators who ask mm. questions and inquire into the bills. Maliktad. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it in case uh, I'm fortunate, in case I'm, I get that uh, vote of confidence from the people. I, I, what issues will you push, sir, when you, if you win the elections? If I win, I guess it would depend on what committee you get also, no? But uh, ideally, I would, I would like to still handle uh, education, uh, something to do with jobs, maybe uh, trade or, or uh, economic affairs would be something I would be interested in. Um, how can you help improve, strengthen the political party system when you become a Well, senator? I filed that bill to, to strengthen. I'll, I'll continue to push for it. I'm not sure if, we, if Congress can still pass the RH bill in this Congress, but <laughs> what's your position on the RH bill? I am in favor of the RH bill. Uh, I think we need it. There are a few provisions that I think it could do without. The provision mm -hmm. on... Uh, not contraceptives. No, I think contraceptives is okay. I think you should, you should make them available because when a person only has 50 pesos a day, he's going to spend it on food. He's not going to buy a condom. 
you're going to vote in favor of the RH bill? I would like to see the final version, but I think more than uh, 80 to 90 percent of the bill is favorable. And if it doesn't pass in this Congress, you will push for it? In I'll support it, I think. Yeah. Freedom I think of information. I'm an author of freedom of information since my first term. So it's, it's, a, it's something I believe in, transparency in government. I think uh, a lot of the people would really benefit. But I think what's missing is that really that awareness or educational campaign. I mean, you, you ask the person in, in the street about freedom of information. He won't make that connection. Yun yung pag walang kurap, walang mahirap hindi pa niya na-realize, pag walang impormasyon, merong kurap, kaya walang mahirap. There's that added, uh, mm -hmm. there's still that that extra layer that that hasn't been pierced. Will you personally convince Malacanang to be more supportive of the bill? I think Malacanang is supportive because Malacanang has given its version to the House. It's the House that and the Senate who have yet to pass the bill. But it's not a priority bill and it's not certified as urgent. I think they only certify it as urgent once there's a committee report. They don't certify bills in the committee as urgent yet. Charter change. Charter change is, I'm open to it, but I don't see it as a, as a great priority. Open to it? What? what? I, mean, I'm not, I don't think, I think we should be open in the sense that the Constitution was crafted under certain conditions. The world has changed very much since then. Wala pang internet non, wala pang uh, globalization, globalized economy. We only got that in the 90s. So the world has changed a lot. And... Uh, the assumptions have changed, the situation has changed, so I would be open to it, but... Opening the economic provisions on... We also have to be careful, you know, you don't want to price your people out of opportunities. Uh, make sure, you have to make sure your people are prepared to compete, otherwise... An Anti-political <clears throat> dynasty bill? I would support one if there's a good one that doesn't limit uh, the freedom of, uh, of people, the freedom of, cho of choice. And... How would I haven't seen a satisfactory definition of of, dyna, of, of of dynasty and of what would be allowable or prohibited behavior? Let's go back to the campaign, sir. How will your father actively campaign for you? What's his role? Oh, he has in his own the campaign. He's running for governor, so yeah. I, I would have wanted for him to be present throughout the campaign. But uh, so his role in your campaign would be um, sort of like an elder statesman, I suppose, telling me um, what I should be doing, guiding me. Setting the direction. Yeah. You think when voters are in the presence and they see the name, you think they'd be able to distinguish between you and your father? I think so. I think so. I think I've. Uh, the, the, the pollsters were telling me the, the you can't make a complete break from your father too fast. That's based on the Pimentel uh, story, story uh, where people were too surprised, where he was first rating high and mm -hmm. then later on. Nung nalaman na hindi pala siya, medyo bumaba siya. So sabi nila dapat yung kung akala na tatay mo, dapat later on mag-break mag away ka and create your own identity. I think, I think to a certain extent I've been successful.